All right, welcome to the Western North Carolina School of Massage. My name is Hope Duvall, and today we're gonna to be exploring some treatment techniques for the quadratus lumborum. We have a patient here uh, who has experienced some right side hip pain, and after a brief postural analysis, we have identified that we have an, some elevation going on on the left-hand side of her pelvis. Uh, so we're gonna explore what's going on in her left side quadratus lumborum and seeing if it may be playing a role in some of the sciatic pain she's been experiencing. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to undrape our client to the gluteal cleft. And we're gonna identify a few very important bony landmarks. The quadratus lumborum is technically the deepest of the abdominal muscles, but we palpate it through the back and sometimes by the side. So we're gonna do two different variations of addressing and treating this muscle with the client in two different positions, prone, lying face down, or side lying. So here, we're gonna identify where this muscle is located. The first bony landmark we're going to explore is the iliac crest. The iliac crest is the very prominent uh, bone that makes up the top of our pelvis. So we'll feel the edge of that uh, tracing along the side body all the way to the lumbar and sacral spine. Uh, so we're gonna palpate right along this border of the iliac crest to begin, we're just gonna trace that, slowly sinking into the tissue, running cross fiber to identify the muscle belly to, to make sure we are on the attachment site in this case of this particular muscle. This muscle also connects or attaches to a slightly inferior to the 12th rib uh, we're not gonna press directly on the 12th rib, being that it's a floating rib, this is a cautionary site. We don't want to inadvertently put a lot of pressure here and risk a fracture. So we're gonna lightly press underneath the edge of the 12th rib. Now in between these two spaces is our quadratus lumborum muscle. Uh, because it is an abdominal muscle and it's so deep, we actually have to use a lot of patience to be able to really palpate and access this muscle. The primary actions of the quadratus lumborum muscle are elevation of the hip and ipsilateral flexion, uh, which means lateral flexion to the same side. So in order to create some space here to really get in and work this muscle from a prone position, we're gonna ask our client to uh, rotate her legs uh, to the opposite side. So contralaterally uh, positioning her legs, creating some space here between the rib cage and the pelvis. One of the things that I like to do before I start with any deep massage work is to do a little bit of myofascial release in the form of fascial stretching. And there's a really handy tool for that. For many therapists who have taken myofascial release classes, we know the cross arm stretch. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a burden to be able to hold that for the lengths of time necessary. So we're gonna use a little tool that's gonna help us not to slip. And these are called Dysum. These little tiny squares are cut out pieces of a type of tape that helps to avoid slipping on the skin. So this work is gonna be done dry. We're going to apply the Dyson tape above and below the bony landmarks that we are intending to stretch. The Dyson tape allows for there to be stick. As you can see, when we pull, create some tension here, you can see the skin gently stretching. We're gonna use our tension from our right hand, in this case, and left hand moving in opposing directions. And we're gonna hold this for at least a minute, sometimes up to five minutes. 
So while we're doing this, we're just gonna ask our client to take a few nice, slow, deep breaths. With my fascial release technique, we're not really looking for pressure. We just want the palms of our hands to slowly sink in and reach just a gentle barrier of tension. And we wanna create a push-pull to allow that tensile force to really soften the fascia or connective tissue. Here, we're not just addressing the muscle, but also the thoracolumbar fascia that covers the mid to lower uh, lumbar spine. And as you can see, we have a little bit of hyperemia or redness here, which is one of the things we're hoping to accomplish uh, to create some localized blood flow to the tissues that we're working. We're going to pick a couple different points at which to do this myofascial stretch. Making sure we keep our wrists nice and straight. Until we've created a softness of the tissue to the entire area. The client should just feel some gentle warming at this point and it won't be perceived as a deep pressure as we're going through a warm up series. So once we've, once we have done some myofascial stretching, we're going to move into some deep stripping to this muscle. We're going to apply just a little bit of massage lubricant to this entire area. And just for the sake of positioning, I'm going to move her arm just gently off the table so I can work in this area and use the palm of my hand to do some petrissage. And I'm going to start close to the transverse processes of uh, L1 uh, through 4 and I'm going to do some gentle cross fiber friction which is just movement of the thumb. And I'm going to slowly work my way with this cross fiber friction down towards the iliac crest. Where I'm also going to do some cross fiber friction and compression. We're just going to compress in little one inch increments all along the attachment site at the iliac crest and friction. And of course, if you feel any mild discomfort or you feel any referral to your low back or gluteal region, please let me know. We're going to move from the 12th rib. We're going to use this hand to pin and the working hand to deep strip all the way down from the 12th rib towards the pelvis. 
pelvis. Three to six times in each line. Here we're gonna be feeling for any taut bands of tissue. Trigger points typically live in taut bands of, of tissue and they'll feel like a little nodule. And if we find an active trigger point, we may get a report of a pain pattern. Uh, the typical pain pattern for QL will be in the lower back and down into the glutes and hips. And sometimes it'll wrap around to the front of the pelvis. And in certain cases, whenever we have a pelvic torsion or rotation, they'll feel it on the contralateral side. So will you let me know if we find anything like that? Right there. All right, so if we find a tender spot, do you like a little more or less pressure here? A little more. A little more? You tell me when it feels like a mild discomfort. Right there. All right, we're gonna hold that. And have you take a few nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Let me know when it starts to feel like it's lessening or feeling better. We just got a little bit of a twitch response, which is one of the things we want to see with trigger point therapy. Still slowly letting go. That feels like it's referring to the front of my body. All right, so we've got a referral to the anterior side of the pelvis. Is it the pelvis or into the thigh? Pelvis. Pelvis. It's a pretty common pain pattern for QL. Let me know when that referral starts to let up. Slow, methodical work. Still there? Yes. I'm going to create a little bit more tension here. And if we have one that lingers for a little bit longer, I'm going to come out. Slowly, I'm gonna go back in at a little bit less tension. Still feeling it now? Nope, it's, it's, it's letting up. Okay, and you're good. And after they start to get a gentle release, we're gonna do some friction. We can either do cross fiber or circular friction here. Very good. And this is the part that I like to call making nice. So after we've done some pretty deep and sometimes intense work to these muscles, we just want to find a nice way to soothe the tissue and calm down the entire area, whether it's a petrissage technique or some gentle effleurage technique to finish. All right. So the final thing that we're going to do here is we're going to end with a little bit of a myofascial traction. Uh, in the beginning of the series, I mentioned that her left leg was just a little bit, just a hair shorter than her right leg uh, in a visual assessment. So we can maybe see that a little bit right now. It uh, looks a little better maybe than it did to start with. Uh, but we're going to finish with some traction. So for this technique, I like to hook in to the fascia underneath the ankle and gently stabilize the top of the ankle and pull the heel down towards me. And we're gonna hold that. We don't really need to pull like we're trying to pull her leg off her body. Uh, we just want a little bit of a myofascial type of tension that should translate more than just in the ankle. It should translate all the way up to the hip, low back and pelvis.
And they held this for at least a minute. You feeling it translating up the body at all? Yes. Yes. Oh, I can feel it all the way into the low back. Okay, that's what we want. You let me know when that feels like it starts to soften or melt. It feels a little softer now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and relax that. We're also going to lift up for a bilateral traction of the legs. We're gonna pull. We're gonna, I call this jokingly the banana because we're gonna bring her body into a full banana. And if she wants to deepen this, she can take her left arm up over her head. There we go. And back to center. We'll bring that arm back down. And we'll do the other side. You can bring your other arm back up over the head. Very good. And back to center. Very good. <laughs>